This video is presented by Trax WA, Training Centre and Subacute Care. In this scenario, 75-year-old Val, a recent amputee, is meeting prosthetist Brendan Cahill for an initial consultation regarding the fitting of a prosthetic limb. Good morning, Val. How are you? Good, thank you. Yes. Now, what, what's happening today? When will I get something to put on this stump? Okay, so you're ready for the next stage, Val. You've been wearing your shrinker, and that's reduced some of the swelling. Your stump's nice and healed. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a cast of your leg to start the process of your new prosthesis. Okay. So what that process is, I take a plaster cast of your leg, which gives me a negative cast of your leg. I fill that with plaster to make a positive model of your leg. I then change the shape of that model and smooth it up, and over that I make the prosthetic socket that fits onto your leg. Now the prosthetic socket has to take your weight through the skin of your leg. So we take some weight underneath the knee and at the back of the knee, like so, mm -hmm. and then on the sides of your leg, but we have to avoid the pressure sensitive areas, the bony spots that can't take any pressure. So your shin bone, the knobbly bits, your kneecap, mm -hmm. we don't want pressure on those areas. So we take the weight through the sides of your stump in the spots that can take pressure, but avoiding the spots that can't take pressure. So a stump shrinker is a compression garment for a stump after amputation. So it works quite like a compression garment for a leg, but obviously shaped after an amputation. Um, they're first applied to um, clients after an amputation when sutures or stitches are out of a, a wound and, and healing is, is in play. So sometimes 10, 14 days after um, amputation. Um, it's applied to reduce the post-operative um, swelling or edema um, of, a, of a stump and to start to reduce the shape of the stump and in preparation for prosthetic castings. Okay, okay. so your stump is looking that, in... That's looking a lot better there. Yeah, it's looking in great, Nick. Well, it's all healed and all, all ready to go. Mm -hmm. So it, it's really important though, Val, to keep an eye on your skin because we're taking the weight through your skin and it's really important that you get very good at monitoring that skin to make sure if there's any problems. Did you have any other questions about the prosthesis, Val? Well, it, you know, will it be a bit like that one over there? Is it going well, to be... Well, I've got one here to, to show you, Val. Now, this is a, a, the leg of... Um, or a prosthesis for someone with a much bigger leg than you. Mm -hmm. um, but as you can see, it's got the inner foam lining so I, had, I had talked about. Correct. So if you have a feel of, of that one. Yeah. So we wear cotton socks inside this liner. Okay. This liner goes onto your leg mm -hmm. and then fits into the, the fiberglass socket, which is the hard part. Mm -hmm. That then connects to the, the components and the foot. And then as you can see, the, there's no cosmetic cover on this first prosthesis, mm -hmm. but that's something that we can get to in later models of the prosthesis. It gives you a good base of support to learn to stand on and to walk on. And then in later models of the prosthesis, there'll be some flexibility in the ankle, mm -hmm. which allows you to walk a bit more smoothly, cope with uneven ground a little bit better. Yeah. Um, but it does require a bit more strength and a bit more balance, which is why we start with a solid ankle foot. The process will take um, a few weeks to provide the prosthesis. So we're gonna take a cast today okay. and then I'll be getting you back in a week's time to do a, a fitting. Um, but it is an ongoing process that we will continue to need to adjust the prosthesis. So I might see you weekly for the first few weeks and then we'll space that out depending on how you're going. The reason we need to see you frequently is that your stump will continue to change right. and it's really important to uh, make the prosthesis continue to fit nicely. So we might have to adjust the number of socks you wear but also make some changes to this foam liner by adding some patches to the outside of this that when it goes into the hard socket, um, changes the shape inside and keeps it nice and okay. firm. So like there's not pressure down the bottom of we, where the stump is? We don't want pressure down the bottom of your stump and we don't want pressure on the, 
the sensitive bony parts of your stump either. We want to keep the pressure in the nice pressure tolerant areas of your stump that can take the weight. So prosthesis needs to be quite tight mm. and when you take off a prosthesis, especially when you're new at wearing one, mm. it, we can find that you get a bit of swelling back in your leg mm. and so wearing the shrinker controls that. So in the early stages of, of prosthetic fitting where clients are wearing the prosthesis for an hour or two a day, they wear their, the amputees wear their shrinkers at all other times, but also wearing it at night as well. So two, a couple of reasons why. Number one is to control swelling, um, but the other uh, main reason we get people to wear a shrinker is that it actually can help control pain and phantom pain um, through a bit of compression, as well as preparing the limb um, for the compression of wearing a prosthesis. It's really important to keep a prosthesis nice and clean. Mm -hmm. The cotton socks that you wear in, in a prosthesis, exactly like socks you would wear on your feet, you wear for the day and then you wash. The prosthesis itself, the liner and the socket can be wiped with a warm soapy cloth and should be wiped, you know, if not daily, pretty regularly. You'll find as you're wearing the prosthesis for most of the day in coming months, it will get a bit warm and a bit sweaty and it's a good idea at the end of the day to give it a bit of a wipe out and keep it nice and clean. Prostheses are funded in Western Australia by WALSA, which is the West Australian Limb Service for Amputees. Um, WALSA will pay for prostheses but also the clinical time of prosthetists um, surrounding the provision of prostheses in WA. The pathway um, for clients is that after an amputation, clients are referred through one of the amputee clinics, the main clinics being at Fiona Stanley Hospital, at St Charles Gardner Hospital and through Princess Margaret Hospital. Um, and clients are seen after an amputation by the, the team at the amputee clinic, which usually consists of a rehabilitation consultant, a prosthetist, a physiotherapist, a podiatrist, potentially an occupational therapist, a social worker, or a psychologist as well, depending on what services that a client needs. Um, a client is then judged ready for prosthetic fitting and a, a prescription is raised by the amputee clinic, which is um, submitted to WALSA um, with a prosthetic recommendation from the prosthetic provider. So prostheses are provided in WA by private clinics. There's three private clinics that are contracted by the WA Health Department under WALSA. So the prescription from the amputee clinic as well as the treatment quote from the private provider are submitted to WALSA, approved so that the week we can then commence treatment. Tracks WA would like to thank the staff and management at Sir Charles Gardner Hospital for their involvement in this project. This project received funding from the Australian Government.